Hello all, today we are going to be analyzing data sets using technology. So we have some information here at the top before we dive in. We can use a website called stats.blue and then for this specific information we're actually going to choose the one variable descriptive statistics calculator. So if I pull that up really quick, it is this one right here, this pink box that you will be using okay so we'll click into that in a little bit we'll come back we can use this calculator to find the mean median standard deviation which we haven't talked about yet minimum maximum quartile one quartile three and it will even make a box plot of larger data sets it also makes a histogram but we won't be looking at that too much i also ask you down here to find variance and this doesn't find variance, but we can easily calculate it when we know the standard deviation. So we've already calculated by hand our mean, our median, our minimum, maximum, quartile one, and quartile three, but we don't know what standard deviation and variance are. These two things can be quite tedious to solve by hand. In college, I only solved maybe two or three by hand, and then the rest I just allowed a calculator to solve. Um, so we are not going to be shelving those by hand at all. So we'll just look at what they mean and then what they look like on the calculator. So what is standard deviation? The standard deviation, this is a statistic that measures the amount each data value would deviate, otherwise known as vary from the mean. The smaller the standard deviation, the smaller the number this is, the closer the data are to one another, the data points are, and then the larger the standard deviation, the more the data points are spread out. Also, if you have something called that normal curve, which we talked about a little bit in the last lesson, 68% um, of data falls with one in one standard deviation. We'll kind of talk about that more. It'll make more sense. And we, on all of our data, don't necessarily have something that's a perfect normal curve, but we'll kind of experiment with what this looks like, even if it's not an exact representation. And then variance, the term variance refers to a statistical measurement of the spread between numbers in a data set, so pretty similar to the standard deviation. Variance is found by squaring the standard deviation. So on stats.blue, they're going to give us the standard deviation, we will just take that number squared to find our variance. So I emailed you a Google Sheet, and we are going to use the data on that Google Sheet to find the mean standard deviation variance. So we'll have to do math to find the variance. We'll also find the minimum, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, and the maximum of each data set. And then we'll also create a box plot for all of these sets. And we actually get one on stats.blue so you can check as you go. Okay, so if you go to your email, you should find an email from me that has your Google Sheet and it will look like this. Your numbers might be different than mine, so you might end up getting different things than I do, but it's still the same process. You'll still answer similarly. You'll just have to do other things, okay? You'll write down different numbers than me. So I am going to copy this data set. So make sure when you copy it in, all of these data sets, at least my data sets, have 42 numbers. Make sure to check when you copy yours in that they always have the correct amount. So I copied my birthday day, which I'm trying to find here. I will click into the one variable descriptive statistics calculator, and I will type this in. I will paste it in. So you can also put up here, if you don't want to forget, birthday day. So it'll tell you what it is. For the histogram bin widths, I would just put one. So then when you calculate it, these are all, all these squares are just one, all these rectangles are all one width wide, so you can see 
how many people had their birthday on which day. So if you come up here, there are your different information. This num data set has 42 points. Our mean is 15.4524. I'm going to write all of those decimal places. That just makes it more accurate than the standard deviation. It's 7.9548. We've got our minimum, our first quartile, median, third quartile, and maximum. So I'm going to pull this over here, and then I can just copy it down. So my mean is... 15.4524 is just as easy as this. You should be very quickly able to just fill in your information. Remember variance, we do have to do some math though. Our minimum is one, our first quartile is nine, median is 15.5, third quartile is 23, and maximum is 28. Now, these five numbers, are something called a five number summary. And these are what we use to create our box plot. So when we go to create the box plot, it shouldn't take us too long. Box plot. And then, like I said, we're gonna have to find our variance. So you can pull up a calculator and all you do is you take your standard deviation, keep all those decimals, and then you just square it. And your variance is this number. So it's about, and this time I'm gonna to round to four decimal places, 63.2788. Now, let's go ahead and create our box plot for this problem. We're gonna use that five number summary, which means I need to have my data points spread from one to 28. I'm actually going to count by two, so I'm going to start at zero. I know you can't have a day zero, but then I can count by evens. Hmm, I didn't give myself enough room. We'll extend that a little bit and get that 28 in there. Okay, so now. If your data is different, you'll use your own five number summary. My minimum is one, my maximum is 28, my first quartile is nine, my median is 15.5, and my third quartile is 23. I'll create my box. I'll attach my whiskers and then I have my box plot. You can also look at the histogram to kind of see what this information looks like. So it's not completely normal. If you recall on a normal distribution, you would have things centered around the middle. It would look something like this. And your median would be right in the middle of your normal curve. So this isn't necessarily the best example to be explaining how the standard deviation works, but imagine we had an actual normal curve and this is how it worked. Oh, I'm sorry, this is not the median. My bad, this is the mean. The mean would be centered right in the middle. So, one standard deviation includes 68% of the data. So there is 68% of data between these two lines. All of this accounts for 68% of it, okay? Now, to find where these lines exist, they are one standard deviation away on either side of the mean. So to find this line from my mean over here, I add one standard deviation to my mean value. To find this line over here, I subtract 
expect one standard deviation from my mean value. So when I add and subtract these, 68% of my data is between 7.4976 and 23.4072. So the remaining 32% is somewhere else. It's smaller than about 7.5 and, and bigger than about 23. Okay, so if you're asked about standard deviation, that's just what that means. I'm not going to go through all the standard deviations and like show these pictures because once again they're not the best representations of it but you can kind of look at the data and still use it to find what we just did okay the rest of these i'm just going to plug in my data create a box plot really quick and then move on so we're looking at screen time now to see if I can oops plugged in the wrong one here we go new screen I'm going to pull up my student data and go to screen time now Make sure I get all my data points. Oops. And then copy them. Go back to stat.blue. And then paste here. We've got screen time on your phone. And then we'll do histogram bin width of one again. And we will calculate, and it pulls up data points 42. My mean is 5.9048. Standard deviation 2.9985. Variance we don't know, but we can find. Minimums 2. Quartile 1, first quartile, is 3.5. Median is 5. Third quartile is 7.5 and maximum is 14. So let's really quick, we'll just go ahead and find our variance. It's going to be 2.9985 squared. I'm going to round to four decimal places again. And then I'm going to create my box plot. So this problem i would say is actually the easiest to visualize because we're talking about hours that you spend on your phone okay so the mean this means that the average amount of students spend about six hours on their phone every day The standard deviation basically tells us it's about plus or minus three hours, would include 68% of the data. The minimum amount of people that the time that people spend on their phone is two hours, while the maximum amount of time that people spend on their phone is 14, which is crazy to me. Okay, so we're going to create this box plot. We have our five number summary here which is included so minimum is two first quartile is three and a half so there's about where it is second quart or sorry median is five third quartile is seven and a half and maximum is 14. so the data does look a little skewed here we pull up our actual box plot too you can kind of check what it looks like it does look a little skewed so less people are on their phone around that 14 amount but still at least one person is so if you recall from our last lesson 25 percent of people that were surveyed spend between two and three and a half hours 
that's pretty okay. 25% of people spend between three and a half and five hours on their phone. And 25 more percent be t spend between five and seven and a half hours. And then this last 25% percent percent spend between seven and a half and 14 hours. That's just a little side note, a little review from the other day. Okay? So let's keep going. You'll just do the same process three more times to find your data. So I'm just going to plug it in. I'm not going to probably talk much. You can do the same thing. You can just do it on your own time and skip watching me if you want. Okay, so I have 42 data points again. This is my math Excel hours. I'm gonna fill it in. You'll notice once again, based on the box plot they have on Stats.Blue, that this is a pretty skewed data set. Our variance when we solve is 16.074, about. It's a good thing to put. I don't think I did that on the last one. About. And then I'm going to create my box plot. And then I'm just going to move on to the next problem. We have our hours worked problem. This box plot looks a little different because the minimum and the first quartile are the same. We have that many data points that are zero, but 25% of the data, data is actually zero hours, okay? Let's find our variance before we create our box plot. Seventy point eight eight one two, and then we create the box plot. We've got 
a minimum of zero as well as a Q1 of zero, so they just line up. Median of five, third quartile of 17, and maximum of 20. Okay, and then last one we have setups per minute. Go ahead and copy this data. Oof. Copy that. Come back here. Paste it in. one bend wide, calculate, and we can plug in our info. We made it disappear. We've got 34.4286, standard deviation of 16.2708, variance we don't know yet, minimum 5, Q1, 23, median, 34.5, Q3, 6, max 70. Find the variance. Oops. Square it. You've got your variance here. And then we'll create a box plot. This one, I think I will count by fives. So now my minimum is 5, maximum is 70, Q1 is 23, median is 34 and a half, Q3 is 46, create the box, create the box, and connect your points, and there you have your box and whisker plot. Okay, so if we go ahead and we scroll down here, this is really the meat and the potatoes of the lesson. I wanted you to know how to be able to use stats.blue and go through and find all these things. It's actually pretty quick. I know this is a long video, but um, doing them on your own time, it makes it so much faster than finding all of this stuff by hand, especially standard deviation and variance. That would be a very, very long video. So actually analyzing the data is what's really important. So review from the other day on the number of sit-ups per minute problem, what is the value of the interquartile range? If you recall, the interquartile range is just the quartile 3 and the quartile 1 subtracted. So it's just Q3 minus Q1. So 46 minus 23. And that gives you your interquartile range of 23. Okay, if you needed to find the actual range, you'd just do the maximum minus the minimum. On the next problem, would the math Excel hours problem be well represented by the median? Why or why not? So if we go up here, we look at our math Excel hours. You are asking yourself, is this median well representing the data? Now, I know how we talked about the other day that if the data is skewed, like this one, it's got a really long whisker, that the median is the better representation compared to the mean. But it's still not really the best representation because it is skewed. 
if the median was more in the center of the box plot, it would be better represented, represented, but it's still not the best. So if we write this out, you can just read it. Okay, so it says, no, the data is skewed. If the median was more in the center of the box plot, it would be better represented. This is still a better representation than the mean, but it's not as good as it could be. And then, why do you think the birthday day data is more normal than any of the other data sets? So, if we go up here, we look at the birthday day data. It's pretty spread out the box plot's pretty well in the middle the whiskers aren't too long it's not skewed if you think about real life context the fact that birthdays have to go between the number one and the number 31 the dates of the people who answer will just be more evenly spread out okay so the dates of birthdays Are more spread out so the data is more normal this is in contrast to the next problem so it asks us look at the histogram this is just the graph of the hours worked why do you think it is shaped like this so I actually need to pull that back up again back to hours worked. I should have left this one up to the last. Thankfully, since we have the Google Sheet, you don't have to type every single number in. If you had to do that, that would be pretty crazy. Okay, so here's the graph we're supposed to be looking at. Okay, why do you think it is shaped like it is? Once again, if you think in real life context, you have on the left side the idea that students can work up to 20 hours in a week. So some kids work as much as they can. And then, so right side, we've got those 20 hours. On the left side, you have zero hours. And then some kids choose not to work in high school. I also didn't work in high school. That's fine. And then in between, you have students who work a variety of hours. But most either work as mo much as they can or they don't work at all. So looking at this graph, thinking about real life information, you can say a couple different things. Teens can work up to 20 hours. So some work as much as they can. And the other part for why there's a lot of zeros Many teens don't work in high school. And about the data points in between, a few people work between 0 and 20 hours. So these two problems are like really diving into the why the data is why it is, just based on life experiences, okay? 
All right, this last one, we are going to look at hours on their phone data, and we're going to say, okay, 68% of students spend between blank and blank hours on their phone. Now, once again, this isn't a perfect normal curve, so this isn't a perfect representation, but we are going to take our mean number, if you scroll up, is 5.9048, and our mean number again. And then to find this percentage, you add your standard deviation to it, and you subtract your standard deviation to it, or from it, I guess. Okay, so if we scroll back up, I already knew what this information was, but hours on their phone, screen time, you're going to use your standard deviation and your mean to find about the range that 68% of students spend on their phone, okay? So when we find this, we get about three hours and about nine hours. So based on this, although it's not completely normal, 68% of students be spend between 2.9 and 8.9 hours on their phone every day. That's pretty crazy, okay? That is all I have for you.